Feeling that and bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes completely. Find your seat, find your steadiness, mind, body, and spirit. On the inhalation, grow taller. On the exhalation, don't lose all that length that you found. Keep some of that. And then slowly exhale. And observe yourself. Are you steady? Have you found your seat? You can join me or just recite your alms silently, whatever is your preference. <clears throat> On purpose between the alms today, I'm going to take a breath. Oh. <clears throat> I forgot to silence the thing, so I'll do that in a minute. Can you find a column or a doorway? Column or a doorway? Oh, you. And then here we go. And then I go here. Here we go. Okay. So I'll, I'll show a couple different options. So most of you have done this with me where you have the long strap back up a little bit so you can see all of me and i've got the strap in half long strap in half and i'm going to put it across the arm the back of the armpit chest okay right there uh, firm in the back of the arm chest and then i cross you see i've got a cross and I'm diving my head in that cross. And then I reach from behind. Take those straps, stand in Tadasana. Either feet a few inches apart, you know, pelvic distance apart, not hip distance apart. The floor of the perineum, most of us women know where that is, but the men may not. But it's just the, the, the floor of the pelvis should face the floor. Okay, so now I've got my elbows bent here and I pull on those straps. So now here, let me, let me show here so you can see this. If I'm a person who maybe has a little bit of head forward stuff going on, you know, my head is forward, right? So I wanna put the head over the base of the spine. So here's how that could help. If, that, if you know that's you, here's my doorway. Put the heel as close to that door's edge. Bend my knees. Got my ponytail out of the way though. Hold on to the straps. Pull. Lift your chest. So now you know you're in a straight line. So you, you decide what you need. Personalize this uh, Tadasana with the strap to open the sides of the chest. And you could try it, you know, a couple different ways. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So the back of your head should touch the wall. And if you're at the wall, try to press your thighs back. The buttocks go down towards the heels. Lift your chest. So Marsha, I just wish I could see your head because everything else looks really good. Can you step back like another two feet closer to your front door? There we go, that's perfect. Let me see. Okay, now your head seems to be fine. Can you lift the, the, the two sides of your pelvis, the two sides of your navel band upwards, tailbone down towards the heels. Yes, that's better. And really pull on those strap, straps. Roll the shoulders back and lift the sides of the chest. Chin up just a little bit. Waist back, Mike. Waist back, yeah, good. All right, and now release that. Okay. Okay, so um, I think last time we did this, I, I said to several of you, you know, this probably needs to be an everyday pose. And I don't know how many of you, we should have a, we should have a 30 day Gomukhasana challenge. That's what we should do. But to warm up for your Gomukhasana, Let's see, I'll be your mirror image. So you're taking your right arm behind you. I'm, I, it's bent and I'm gonna reach it at my waist and I'm clasping, intertwining those hands to warm up for my Gomukhasana. So it looks something like this from behind. So the idea is to draw your right shoulder back, your elbow back. So this armpit chest lifts up. This is the storehouse of energy that we need to find in our back bending. So you're pulling your hands on around to the front, not to let, not to distort the trunk, keep the trunk facing forward, but roll that right shoulder back. Okay, now let's stay there and it's your, um, your right hand that's behind you, reach up, reach up. You can ratchet, this is ratcheting, back and forth and reach those fingers up and then your left arm goes up and takes a hold of whatever you've got. Now, those of you who know you need the strap, you've got the strap, right? It's in the top arm. Something like that. Reach up the, the top arm from armpit chest to elbow. And at the same time, careful that you're not letting this up arm come close to the head. Keep it away from the head and lift up. Hmm. Go Mukasana. All right, because it's hard for me to see how many of you uh, just do uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. How many of you um, still are not able to catch? Can't see everybody's back. Yep, thumbs up, you cannot catch. Okay. Yeah, good, Bob. So I would say this needs to be an everyday pose. Health of the shoulders. It is just so necessary. Okay, now release Tadasana arms. So I'll stand here. Okay, that was your right arm came behind. So now your left arm comes behind, intertwine the fingers. So I'm kind of pressing the um, Let's see, it'll be your right hand. I'm pressing my right hand into the left. So I'm closing the palm more. Maybe you could see that, yeah. And that pulls the hands a little bit more forward, not to distort the trunk though. And I can draw the left shoulder, your left shoulder away, back. So this left shoulder has to stay back. Thighs back, your feet are pressing the floor, the thighs are working, 
the, the floor of the perineum, the, the pelvic floor faces the floor. This decides the chest up. Okay, then you keep that. You let go, you reach up, ratchet, reach the other arm, take a hold. Keep your weight back on your heels. Lift the two sides of the pelvis, the two sides of the navel up. Draw that left shoulder back. Yeah, and don't distort your head either. So it's usually the bottom arm, side body that gets left behind. See what you can do about that. <clears throat> Can you lift up the two sides of the pelvis, two sides of the navel equally upwards and draw that bottom shoulder arm back? Okay. All right, release, come down. Uh, just stand where you have room to take your arms out to the side like this. I'm just gonna show you from the side angle. So Tadasana, stand in Tadasana. Turn your palms up. Take your arms out horizontally. So turn that bicep. Turn that bicep and suck your outer arms in. Here is me not sucking my outer arms in. Here is me sucking my outer arms in. Don't let the hands go lower than the um, shoulders. So this, I've seen some of this. So you look and you see that your hands are just in line to your shoulder. Turn your thumbs more towards the floor behind you. Yeah, and then suck those biceps and triceps to their bones and the upper arms to their to the shoulder sockets. Okay, now keep that, keep that and go up for Urdhva Hastasana. Because of that previous work, the arms should be behind your head. If you did it correctly, so watch here. If you turned enough and you suck those out, out, upper outer arms in, arms are, you know, just behind your ears. Keep the legs strong, pull up on the quadriceps. Don't bend your elbows, child. Yeah, it's just Urdhva Hastasana. All right, and then release from that. Okay. Utkatasana. Utkatasana. This is the pose that they say is good for um, equestrians. So we're going to do it a couple different ways. Have a blanket nearby. You're not going to use it first off, but just have a, a, a blanket nearby. Stand to face your wall about a foot and a half or so away from the wall, 20 inches or so. Okay. So watch first. I think this demonstration is, is pretty telling. So in Light on Yoga, he says, don't let your chest go forward. Keep your chest back. And the, the line of the trunk, well, you'll see, you know, the arms in the trunk, uh, from the base of the hips form a, a straight but lateral angle, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so the first time we're gonna do it, the feet are together. I'm gonna put my hands at shoulder height. So here's my thumbs, and I just put the fingers on the wall. Fingers here. Okay, now remember what I said about the chest not coming forward, but the chest staying back? So I'm gonna bend my knees, this is firmly contracting in, hips in. I squeeze my thighs together, so watch. I don't let the, the chest come forward. I don't let the chest come forward. Chest back, chest back. Okay, so the thighs are parallel with the floor. You've got the wall. Now, some of you, if you're nervous about this, you could have a, a, actually a piece of furniture I don't know, a bookshelf or something. 
something that you can actually hold on to if you're nervous about it. But you know, boy, do, do those legs have to work? Your abdomen has to pull back towards the spine. Don't let the abdomen fall out. Are you ready? We're gonna do, let me just tell you the order of how I'm gonna work on most of the poses today. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of things, the prep with you. And then I'm gonna ask you to do the full pose three times on your own. Okay? All right, you ready? This is the prep, prep one. Mm. Bend, 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 bend. Don't let your chest come forward. Look up, look up. Squeeze the knees and thighs together. Bend at the hips, Marsha. Bend, go down. Thighs parallel to the floor. If your hands come down a little bit, that's okay, but don't let the chest come forward. Squeeze, knees, hips together. Okay, then come up. All right, so some of you didn't get very far. All right, now I have, let's see. Um, grab another one. Here's the blanket as the height as I was sitting on for Swasti Kasana, the, end book, you know, the beginning of the class. I'm gonna just fold it one more time. I'm putting it on the floor. Okay, watch first. This is called high heel utkatasana, high heel fierce pose. Now this time my hands are going to slide down just a little bit. So I bend. So much easier, huh? Don't let the chest come forward. Push. You can push into the wall. Look up. Have a go there. Let's see. Bend at the ankles, bend at the knees, bend at the hips. So Bob, watch your, your straight line still. Okay, so here, um, just watch for a second. Here's what I'm seeing. <coughs> I'm seeing, through, you know, one line, two lines. I want one line from here to here. Make sense? One line. Uh, I don't even know if I'm, let's go. <sighs> if you wanna see, this is page 89 and come to the screen and look, but his one line from his, the back of his pelvis, this is one line all the way up. Okay. So you tried it. And it's just your heels. Bend, Kathy Lindauer, bend, bend, bend. Look up, don't let your chest come forward. Bend in the ankles, bend in the knees, bend in the hips, hips down. Buttock bones down. Ah, oh, some improvement. Okay, now watch. A um, couple of you need to watch that lumbar area that it doesn't come up. Then the lumbar get tight, you know, get uh, shorter. So now your choice. Which prop did you like? Or you can do none. But you're going to do this three times from Urgohastasana. So remember what you learned in Ergo Hastasana here? Turn the palms out. If you're doing it three times from Ergo Hastasana, it looks something like this. Don't let the weight come off your uh, forefoot. You have to press the whole foot down three times on your own. From Ergo Hastasana, arms back, arms back, Chaya, arms back, lift your chest. Now bend in the hips more and you've got it. Go down, thighs parallel to the floor. All right, and then inhale, come up. That was one. All right, remember that steady seat. Go to where 
Go and try to stay and don't let, uh, let yourself tremble. But can't you find a, a comfortable place where you can stay in the pose and work on the actions? Buttocks down, Marsha. Tailbone tucked under you more. It's like your tailbone is coming towards the back of your knees. Nice, Karen. Yes, that's it. Chest up. Very nice. All right, so three times on your own. And when you're done, just stand in Tadasana. Good. One more. A couple people have one more. Yes, better, Kathy. T tuck that tailbone, bring the, the buttocks towards the back of the knees, the back of the knees towards the buttocks. There they meet. There they are strong. Okay, and now come up. All right, because it is back bending, I don't want to wear you out. <clears throat> All right, I will let you decide whether you want to use the wall or not. Uh, let's see. Step your left leg forward and your right leg back. I'm going to do, I'll do the mirror image here. <clears throat> so I've got my... This would be your right leg at the wall, your left leg is forward. It's actually um, the 19th, it's an odd day. So we're gonna start with the opposite side forward. Okay, so if your left leg is forward, your right hand holds your left wrist behind your back. Okay, this is called <clears throat> Bada. Mani Banda. So you guys know uh, Jalandhara Banda, right? It's the chin lock. So this is the Banda for the arms. So here we are. Now, if you cannot straighten your arms, I'm okay with that. If you can, straighten your arms. Push into that front left foot and take your, the weight of your trunk over the base of the pelvis, so as opposed to starting the pose like this. So push to go up, push to go back, and stretch the arms back behind you where you're almost touching the wall. Got that? Lift the sides of your trunk. Open the sides of your chest. No, stay upright, Doug. Stay upright, stay upright. Yeah, if, yeah I haven't told you to do anything else just to be upright. Go up, push the floor, front foot, go up. Press that back thigh back, go up. Okay, and then step the right leg forward, and now left leg back. I said you could have the wall, you don't have to. You can just be out in the middle of the room. Okay, if your left leg is forward, the right wrist, right? Left wrist holds, it's the opposite. <laughs> so right, right wrist holds the left, yeah, yeah. Right wrist holds the left hand if you, I'm, I'm doing the opposite side, that's where I get into trouble on these things. So I push the floor, keep the trunk facing forward, push the floor and just go up, go up and take the arms back. Open the sides of your chest. Try to line up your head over the base of the spine. Have enough space between the legs. Nice. Okay. Okay, then just watch. You can just stand in, tada, or stand in a relaxed position and just watch. I think I'll face forward to show you. So you'll have the right leg forward. Is that what you did first? What, what side did you do first? Whatever side you did first. Okay, so I've got my left leg forward to show you. I'm reaching behind and I'm getting the sides of the trunk nice and tall and the chest open. Okay, then I'm taking the arms out to the side. I'm turning, 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 and going up for 
preparation for rear vajrasana one. Then I bend. I don't let the trunk come forward, not forward, stay back. And the head can go back as is able. Okay? So it's Virabhadrasana prep with the Baddha Mani Bandha to open the sides of the chest and then arms out to the side. Okay, so you had your left leg forward first. Yes. Good. Left hand holds, uh, right hand holds left wrist. So push the floor and take that weight back over your heels. Press your back thigh back. Front of the thigh to back of the thigh. Okay, then keep the sides of the chest. Turn your arms out horizontally. Go up and then exhale and bend into your one. I'm more interested in you keeping the chest open, the sides of the trunk long, sides of the navel lifted, then I am coming to that complete horizontal thigh, front thigh. But those of you who can, you can bend it more <clears throat> properly. There's your press control guy. Okay, inhale and come up. And second side, right leg forward, left hand holds the right wrist. Levelize yourself here. Pull those arms back. Open the sides of the chest. To me, um, you know, not just for, for uh, Marsha's benefit, but I will tell you, any neck issues, this is wonderful work because it allows me just to, I'm not even uh, physically using any muscles to take my head back. I've got the chest open so much that my head just goes back. And that C7 finds its seat in the body, in the cervical vertebra. Okay, and then arms out to the side. Reach the arms up, bend, and go up, go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be steady. Don't let the knee go in, Chaya. Track your front knee right in line to the hip, inner knee to outer knee a little bit more. Yeah, bring that left side on around. Those of you who are in the pose, find your steadiness. Stay in the pose. In each stage, what could you find to work on that will bring you to a steadier, non-trembling place? That is the significance of asana is steady, firm, comfortable. Okay. Adhamukashvanasana. If you need the wall, you may take the wall. Otherwise, plant your hands forward. Bring your weight. See how I'm, I think, I hope, let me put my camera back on spotlight so you can see. I love how um, Abby had us work on this every time when we were in her workshop a few weeks ago. And it was this work. You know, whether we were on, okay, yeah, it's definitely easier to start on all fours. But she had us, when we were down here in the preparation, she had us bring our weight forward so we can really feel the weight on the hands, okay? Then keeping that, keep that weight, keep that weight, and then push, like push, push, push. Don't be in a hurry to straighten your legs because then you don't get that length. Secondly, don't be in a hurry to get the heels on the floor because then the thighs quit working. Press the thighs back. 
You haven't lost that weight on your hands. Push. Lift your shoulders up and back. Adho Gokashmanasana. See how you're doing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Karen, see, try to keep your heels up like you have them and then lift from the top of the thighs and press the thighs back. But don't let the shoulders come forward. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Shoulders back or your chest coming closer to your legs, basically. Chest closer to your legs, press that floor. Reach up your biceps and triceps, suck the outer upper arms in. Have some effect on that thoracic spine moving in, shoulder blades digging deeper into you and going up your back. All right. Walk forward Uttanasana. So here I was. Okay, so I walk forward in Uttanasana. I'm going to purposely have my feet apart and I'm going to do the same thing as I did in uh, Adha Mukha Svanasana. With just my fingertips, sort of like a suction, I'm going to put the weight forward into my hands. And you see how nice, you know, I get lots of length in this Ardha Uttanasana. I draw my shoulders back. Okay, then I try to keep that, see, I'm pushing so much that I'm keeping the weight in my heels. Then I keep that weight, walk my hands back, and let my trunk go down. Eventually, hands come right next to the feet. Let the trunk go down. Uh -huh. so, knees straight, quadriceps pulled up tightly. Let the inner, the back of the Legs uh, turn out, inner to outer. And feel as though this top of the buttock flesh is rolling over towards your back, sort of like a nice waterfall, rolling over towards your back. Okay. All right, come up to the Arda position. Walk your hands forward. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale and stand up. Okay. Ooh, I always run out of time. So let's just do a quick, uh, if, if you're doing Shirshasana, Shirshasana. As you know, Shirshasana, you want to do Shirshasana with me uh, quickly uh, with the wall. That's what I'm going to demonstrate real quick. And then if you don't do any of that, you may do. Um, Forearm balance, forearm balance, okay? So here we go with <clears throat> intertwining the palms, <clears throat> placing the knuckles at the wall, pressing the forearms down. Before I come up completely, I'm gonna press and move my shoulders back. This is a little bit of forearm balance there. Then I walk up and place my head in the hands. One leg goes up, then the other. Press the forearm bones, the wrists, the outer bottom edges of your hands down and lift your shoulders up. Buttocks away from the wall and up towards your heels. And then the forearm balance is fine. So move your shoulders uh, back. Move your shoulder blades deeper into your back. Walk in, Chaya. Keep looking forward. Keep looking forward and walk in. And then if you've got one leg up, other leg goes up. Mike, I see a little bit of problem with the placement of your elbows. Um, looks like your elbows are 
they look like they're here. I'm not sure if your hands are touching the wall and you just don't ever, hmm, don't ever learn the, the placement of your elbows by crossing your elbows and putting them like that. That is not correct, all right? So what you need to do is have the hands together and this outer bone, outer elbow bone in line to the outer shoulder. If we, we do this, it's too narrow of a, of a position. Okay, then I place the head and maybe I'm just here but I push those upper arm, uh, lower arms and lift the upper arms up. No weight on your head. It's all in the shoulders. Yeah, I wish I had a, I wish I was there, Mike, and I could put my fist in your shoulder blades. Shoulder blades have to move into the back more. Yeah, and if you're in forearm balance, you're working on that, Kathy, you can, or you can do a, a downward dog again. Just something that, that gets the head below the heart. Okay, Chaya, you're doing so well there. Walk in, walk in, move your shoulders back. Keep pushing the, the forearms slightly forward and the elbows back. And now reach one leg up, right leg up, right leg up. Reach, reach, lift the thigh, lift the thigh. Uh, hamstring to buttock, hamstring to buttock. Lift that thigh. Okay, change sides. Okay. Good. And then rest in, when you come down, rest in um, Adho Mukha Mirasana. Briefly with your toes, so turn around and your toes point to the wall. Adho Mukha Virasana. Okay. All right, Chaturanga Dandasana. Chaturanga Dandasana. So you're gonna use the ball for your feet. And remember I said I was gonna, we're gonna try a couple prep things and then you're gonna do three times on your own. So I bring the toes, I bend my toes back and stack my heels underneath my toes. Okay, then I lie down. And in order for you to really see this, I'm going to take the edges of my sticky mat, but it's not absolutely necessary that you do that, but I'm pulling the edges, my, my sticky mat forward and tucking my tailbone under and my abdomen is off the floor. I pull the abdomen up. So I just try this a few times. Oh, the back of the leg, it should roll inside to outside and hamstring to butt. Pull the hamstring to the butt. So if I'm not holding the sticky mat, I'm just push, can you see? So I'm pushing so much that my abdomen and now my chest is off the floor. I don't know if you can see that. Abdomen and chest is off the floor. Shoulders roll back. Shoulder blades into your back. Have a rest. So I'm pushing the floor forward that's underneath my hands and I'm lifting the abdomen off the floor. The legs are working. So three times like that or a couple times of the prep and then you're ready to go. So watch here as I, as I take that uh, last prep thing further. I'm still using the wall. I'm still tucking the toes. With my forehead down, I reach back and I help those thighs roll out. And already when I, before I start, all of my thigh is off the floor. Then I press the hands forward. 
and lift. So I'm still pushing the hands forward, pulling the abdomen up and lift. You don't have to stay long. Lift anything that you've got off of the floor. Thighs. Before you start, the thighs should be off. Then pull the abdomen up towards the back body. Lift your chest and go up. So Julie has extra weight on her. That's good. <laughs> She's got a kitty cat on her back. So move the kitty cat, kitty cat towards your heels. Top of the waist towards your heels. Use the wall. Press your heels into the wall. Yeah, so you're doing good, Mike, with the head. Sorry, with the thighs. Your legs are really strong. Pull the abdomen away from the floor. Push your hands, scrub your hands slightly forward, and then lift your chest and your head. Yeah, Marsha, you have a question? No question. And Kathy, or those of you who find this very difficult, you could just do this at the wall. You can stand up. You're about 15 inches away from the wall. Your hands are at, uh, heel of the hand is at the armpit chest. And I'm pulling the hands down, down towards the wall, uh, towards the floor. And I come in. And there it is. Same pose. There's always options. Sorry, I didn't show you that at the beginning. Okay. Did you try three times on your own? All right. Okay. Moving on to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Yeah, if, it, if at any point you have any lower back uh, stiffness, pain, Supta Padagustasana, or um, chair, Bardhvadasana, with a brick between your knees. All right, that same blanket that I used for something, um, I'm putting it off my sticky mat, on the floor, about uh, 10, 12 inches away from my sticky mat. First time I do this, Urdhva Mukha, I'm going to take another blanket. Basically, same, same two blankets, same way they're folded the same way. And I come down to the floor and I put my toes, my toes and about oh, most of my foot on the Sticky mat. The blanket here is just underneath my rib cage and beyond, my chest is beyond it. Okay, now watch. I'm using this sliding deal to slide. I'm gonna hmm, I'm gonna turn my hands out 90 degrees the first time. So with my head down, I reach back and make sure that my backs of my thighs are turned out. Front of my thighs are rolled in. Okay, and then I firm the outer hips in. I press my feet down into the uh, back blanket. Inhale. On an exhalation, I come up. So did you see that? Did you see the slide? It's very helpful because the idea is to slide your trunk forward quite in between your arms and shoulders and press the hands down and uh, you can just look straight ahead. You do not have to curl the neck back. That's more of an advanced position. But the feet are pressing down. Do it again. Legs are engaged. The pubic bone is, you can even reach, I like to do this, I forgot about this. Uh, you, I like to reach underneath and grab that pubic ball of skin, grab the lower abdomen, 
and reach it forward towards the chest side. But I press down, inhale, come up. Just look straight ahead. Draw those shoulders back, legs firmly engaged, hug the tailbone into the body and roll those shoulders back. Did everybody get the motion of the moving the sticky mat? Yeah, it doesn't work to have the blanket on your sticky mat, right? The blanket has to be on the floor that moves. And then the chest blanket, the rib blanket is, is not under your chest, but under your ribs. Yeah, if you can have the blanket, or yeah, you can just fold, you, you can even get rid of the sticky mat. You can just have the sticky mat across uh, Mike too. All right, three times on your own. Yeah, good. And if you like these props, you can keep them for your three times or you can do the full pose. I really like the slider uh, blanket. If, if you have wrist issues, the blanket is a nice option underneath the wrist. Otherwise, let's see. If I decide, okay, I don't need the wrist blanket, hand blanket, I get rid of that. Lengthen the trunk forward. Place the hands, this time they're just pointing straight ahead. And my hands are where they would be in Urdhva Dhanurasana. So the fingertips are lined up with the tips of the shoulders. Inhale. So I push down to lift the front of the trunk forward, pull the arms, sorry, pull the chest through the arms. Tailbone firm, legs firm. Okay, don't do a forward bend yet. Ready to move on, lay flat. You can move your uh, foot slider blanket out of the way. I think I can be. Okay, can you go back and find your um, long strap again? You still have your long strap? Kneeling. Kneeling, put your strap on as you did before. Right there at the armpit, back of the armpit. Chest, cross it. Okay, know that you're holding the opposite sides. Left hand holds the strap that's on the right shoulder. Right hand holds the strap that's on the left shoulder. Okay, so you just kind of have to know where they are in space, lie down. For Shalabhasana work. So this is our first prep. We'll do this one together. So reach underneath to your pubic plate and scrape all that skin forward. Okay, then reach to your uh, strap. Now the attempt is to try to straighten the arms. The first time the, the legs are gonna, the feet are gonna stay on the floor. Inhale, exhale, lift. Press your abdomen down, lift your trunk up, your upper trunk. And down. Okay, second time, you'll lift the legs. And third time, we won't use the strap at all. It'll just be there as a Distant memory. All right, so I, I lift my forehead down again. I take that skin, lower pelvic, abdomen, chest forward. I hold my strap, stretch the legs out, tailbone away from the waist, legs firm, inhale, exhale. Lift the top off the floor as much as possible. And stretch the arms back. Roll the shoulders back. Look straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Good. All right.
right, last time, just let go of your strap. You can leave it there as a, it's kind of interesting. You still feel it there and it reminds you of the work that's required. This time, same thing with the forehead down. Take the skin of the front of the trunk, scrape it forward. Take your hands at your sides, thumbs facing your thighs or thumbs nearest your sides and palms up. Pick up the legs, turn the inner thighs, the backs of the thighs out, firm outer thighs. Inhale, on an exhalation, lift, arms and legs. Press the abdomen down, reach back as if you were reaching towards your kneecaps. Yeah, okay, exhale, come down. You're gonna do two more on your own. Shalabhasana. Okay, good. Roll the shoulders back. So I'm back there, pulling your arms back. Mm -hmm. Reach your thumbs more. Reach your thumbs. Yeah. Good. Press your abdomen down to lift your thighs more. Okay, rest. And last one on your own after. And when do you know when to come back, you know, to start again is when your breath is normal. Okay, on this last one, think about that steadiness. Think about that seat for the mind, the body, the soul. For in every pose, we are to find that seat for all those three things that make up the body as one. Okay, scrape the front of the body forward. Place your hands, palms up, thumbs at your side, at your thighs. On an inhale, then exhale, lift up, press the abdomen down, reach your legs back, reach your arms back. Pull those shoulders back. Biceps, your biceps and triceps should be sore in the next few days. I did this class uh, Saturday. <laughs> and I'm my this is sore on me today this area that hangs down as we get older <laughs> it's sore so that means I was working right to tone the body okay so just have a rest there that was Shalabhasana now Bhujangasana is going to be easy the first two are prep and then the last time uh you decide which one you want to do, three of them on your own. So the first two. <clears throat> Same thing. And take the front of the body, scrape it forward. The first breath, the hands are going to be, gosh, come on, right here. I'm halfway off my mat. Let's see, I have to go this way. Halfway off my mat. Halfway on my Way forward. Set. So I pick up the legs. I roll the back of the thigh inside out. I stretch the legs back behind me. Then I begin to press the floor and come up. So here, here's the the stability in, in Bhujangasana is the lumbar spine. What's moving is the thoracic. So move the bottom of your shoulder blades deeper into your back. Roll those shoulders back. The pelvis, the pelvis should remain facing the floor. Curve. So the elbows, remember uh, Chaturanga? You, you had this feeling that the, the hands were pulling back back towards you, so you can have that feeling here. Okay, now measure, look at your forearm bone and measure about halfway and put the heel of your hand about halfway in between where your forearm bone was. So that's about right there. Do this again. 
Push that floor forward. Make the legs firm. Tailbone down. Tucking under you more. It's like someone's got a hook on the tailbone and is bringing that tailbone forward. And then come up. Your elbows may or may not straighten. Curve in the thoracic. So pull those elbows back towards you. And move your shoulder blades deeper into your back. Breathe, find your steadiness. Okay, now I'm gonna take a break. Okay, so the last one, you decide. <clears throat> you could, you know, this was uh, the halfway mark. The full mark would be with the fingertips right there at the shoulder tips. Your elbows may not straighten. That is fine. Pull the chest forward and back. The pelvic bones still face the floor. Keep the pelvic bones down. So might, maybe that's a little bit too much for you because I don't see a lot of curvature in the thoracic spine. So you decide which hand placement you got more of that thoracic curvature. You may have, you know, may have to bring the hands wider. Yeah, I like that better. Did you change it? Yeah. That's better, shoulders down, chest up. Pull the ribs forward. Yeah, okay. So that's your Lujangasana. Okay, now, I want to end with chair dvipada, Viparita Dandasana. So it's going to, to uh, feel pretty easy for you guys. I should not say and because there is one more after this. But I would like very much to see if you can get your heels in or feet into the wall. So it just so happens that I have marks on my sticky mat that I know where, oops, I know where my cha chair legs go because of that, those marks. So then, let's see. I'm going to show the this version with the heels up on blocks. So the heels can be just a little bit lower than the chest. So first, here's the order. Chest, um, neck curvature is first with the buttocks completely off the chair. Then you go to the middle of your shoulder blades. Oh, and here for maybe Kathy, Kathy Beckman, and anyone else who feels they need extra support for their head and neck, place for your head. You might even need something like that, a bolster and a blanket. So I want to watch you. So just watch me real quick. So here's the, the order of uh, order of the day. So buttocks off the chair. Trunk completely on the most of my trunk completely on the chair. So then I want to curve my neck over that front of the chair seat. So my hands are here. I start to curve. Now you see I'm just a nice neck curvature. Okay, my hands are pressing into the chair bar and I can kind of let the sticky mat take some of the skin of the top of my shoulder blades and move it down my back. Now, <clears throat> in order to make sure my hamstrings are working, I lift my toes. Can you see that? I lift my toes 
and I pull the heels as if towards the chair legs. This is me not doing it. This is me doing it. So don't let this just hang. This has to work. So here's the order. You're in that curvature. Then you curve. It's, it's not so much yes. You have to put more of your pelvis on the chair. But as you curve, you know, as you go over the chair, keep curving, keep curving. So now I'm gonna to go to the middle of my shoulder blades. Push my heels forward towards the chair, pull them forward. And as you can see, I'm already on my support, which is quite nice. So I can stay here, stay in the middle of my shoulder blades. I can find the wall. There I am. So where the buttock flesh meets the hamstring, lift up against the thighs pressing down. Press your heels into the wall more than your toes. Heels, thighs down, backs of the buttocks up and in. Okay, if this is easy for you, and you do not need, you know, remember this was just a demonstration, and you don't need that support, you'll take your hands through the chair first, then place your legs. Curve, pull the chair right against that bottom of the shoulder blades, and curve over your chair more. Curve, it's like I'm trying to put my head more under the chair. Okay, now I get to watch you. Remember when you come up, you always have to put yourself a little bit more on the chair seat. Hold the top of the chair, head back, elbows in the chair, head back, and come up. Okay, your turn. You don't have to use height underneath the heels unless you need it. but it's nice, very nice. Yeah, let that skin on the shoulder blades get taken under you more. So it, it's scooting more towards your waist. Yeah, and Marcia, you're okay without support. Okay. Yeah. All right, now those of you who have the chair bar, I don't know, you might have the cross chair bar, you might have the outside of the chair bar, but pull on that chair bar to affect some sort of change in that bottom area of your shoulder blade. Pull and curve more over that chair bar. Don't hold your head up. Let the mu muscles of the neck relax. And if it doesn't, then you need the support. Straighten the legs. If you have your feet on the floor, good for you. Pull your toes towards you. And keep the bottom of the buttock area activated. Lift the bottom of the buttock in, hamstring towards the buttock crease and the thighs down. Uh, BKS Sayangar used to <clears throat> literally walk on people around the room in Pune. Everybody was against the wall. You know, I, I guess there's three sides to that room, the big room. And he would just jump, he did not really jump, but he would walk from person to person and actually stand on their thighs. I've actually had it done to me, not a man, but it felt pretty good. Use your arms to, to coil more, you know, to make the thoracic spine curved more over that chair's edge. 
All right, if you're down, just uh, stay in um, the chair and take chair barred Vajasana. We're gonna do one more thing with the chair and the chair is gonna be at the wall. One more thing with the chair. Okay, remember how to come up. Bend the knees, scoot a little bit more of your buttocks, pelvis on the chair seat, and then elbows on the chair and come up. Okay, last back bend. One more back bend. And we're okay on time. I'm putting this um, extra sticky mat behind the chair bar because it kind of bangs against the wall and makes marks on the wall. So there it is. Now, this guy, the pose, sorry, the pose is Ustrasana. Ustrasana. I've got some extra padding here for my shins. Kneel up and put your thighs and or your pubic plate, depending on your stature, right against that chair. Okay, the, the two preps we'll do together. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you first if you'd like to see, but the two preps we can do together and then I'd like for you to try it three times on your own. So the preps, the hands are gonna stay on either the backs of the buttocks or the thighs. I'll give you a choice. <clears throat> so when I ask you to kick the shin down, it kind of makes this thigh Act, it activates it. So I press and it pulls that hamstring up to the buttock crease. So I do it on both sides or I can do it simultaneously. Yeah, and I keep this well pulled up. Okay, then, yeah, I'm really pressing and I'm keeping the thighs vertical. Okay, now, Jalandara Bandha, very important for the prep. So I'm tucking my chin into my chest and lift, you can use your hands here to lift the side body up. So chin into the chest. Now, palms go toward, uh, fingers down, thumbs out. They go on my back. So I'm pressing my hands on my lower back, my sacrum. My little fingers are touching. They don't have to, but, so I press, press, Jalandaramanda, and go up, go up so much that eventually your head just goes back. Mm, your thighs should be burning about now. Thighs burning. Okay, that was the first prep. The second prep, can you move your hands to your thighs? If that felt good and you have some trepidation, fear about it, maybe hurting your lower back or you're not sure of the stability of your lower back, Keep your hands on your lower back. So I'll start with the hands on the lower back. Press, press. Lift up, down, down, up. Go up, go up, go up. Up, up, up. Curve, curve, go back. Then my hands go to my thighs. And now my head back. <sighs> Up. Okay, those are your two preps. So the final pose that I'd like for you to try, try at least twice. Maybe it's getting late. So try at least twice. You can do everything you did before. So watch. Keep pressing down on those shins, pushing your tailbone into the body. 
Coiling action of the thoracic spine. Remember you are, you do not have to grab your feet. Yeah, nice Mike. You can grab your feet without losing the chair, without losing the chair, then you're ready. Yeah, make those thighs work, Karen. Push the um, front of the thigh to the back of the thigh, the back of the thigh towards the bone. Nice. Not so much space sopa between the two legs, especially for you. Maybe just a couple of inches, no more than four. Mm -hmm. Okay, last time. Yeah, go up, 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 up. And then the head just, re you know, it's just, it's comfortable. It finds its seat. C7 finds its seat more deeper into your uh, cervical um, vertebra. Nice. Okay. Turn around, you know, come up, sit to the, hmm, you, you can sit to the uh, right side of your chair. I've got my feet up on that blanket, I doubled it. This is just a really gentle, um, version of Pashasana to help us come out of the twist, uh, out of the back bends, relief for the back bends. So up here, I'm, I'm turning, I'm turning the back body, my focus, my brain, my, uh, I don't know, the, the, the mind is hopefully in the back body, facing out to the middle of the room. Then I'm going to take my, you'll take your left arm out, Turn the left arm like we did in uh, the horizontal Virabhadrasana version, and I'm going to slide the left arm outside the knee. Then my back hand is going to go to the chair bar. Now I push into the, the elbow, pushes into that outer knee, and the, the two knees push together to help me turn. Turn. Now take your sternum towards your chest. What tends to happen is the side you're turning to, that buttock becomes light, so don't allow that. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> and then come back and sit upright. Turn to your left. Turn your back body towards the camera, I'm assuming some of you are placed that way. Mm -hmm. And then slide, you know, turn your uh, right arm out, slide the top of the arm, forearm, uh, toward, uh, on the outside of that left knee, and turn some more. Sternum to chin, chin away from the chest, and turn. Chair Pashasana, just an easy vent version. Yeah, knees are together. Don't let the uh, left leg swing forward. If the left leg swing forwards, that means you're doing the pose from your hips. Do the pose by turning your waist more. Waist. Yeah, all right, and then Come back to face forward. You've got that blanket right there. Take it, make it, make a, a, a nice little roll there. I'm just, I'm rolling it pretty much. It's a thinner blanket. So if you have the thicker Mexican blankets, maybe not so much. So you're trying, I'm sitting back in the chair, well back in the, near the hinges. And I've got that 
that roll and I punch it down there in the center a little bit and I lift the abdomen up and over. Go forward first. Ooh. Your feet are the width of the chair. And if this is all good and comfortable, can you reach the, either the back to your legs or the crossbar? Come up or stay. I'm going to use this blanket for my Chattus Padasana. You'll take three Chattus Padasanas. And then you'll have your brick ready for Satu Banda, and then we'll be done. If you have to leave, I understand that this is for my shoulders. I have the brick on the ready. So I tuck the shoulders under, grab the feet. So if you don't feel your hamstrings working here, lift your toes and pull the heel back towards you like that and that activates the hamstring three of those don't stay too long 10 15 seconds a piece off out of the third one take your break place it either the narrow spine way or the wider sacrum way, whatever is comfortable to you. Straighten your legs. Set Jivanda Sarvasa. Even in a pose like this, we are to find our comfortable seat where the mind, the body, the spirit or the soul can become one. In every pose, there, there has to be some, you know, analysis or you know experimentation if you call it that's why I, I tried to give you some options in some of the uh, prone baby back bends today that's your experimentation then you have to analyze what works best for you as you are uh, growing in your practice But basically, eventually, uh, there's, there has to be a, a means to lessen your effort, to, to become more efficient in asana. We must learn the transition between doing the asana and being in the asana. I particularly like, you're either in uh, Setu Banda still, or if you're done, you're done, you relax completely. It's just gonna read this. So I particularly like Edwin Bryant's um, interpretation <clears throat> uh, of 247. So everybody knows 246. 
right? 246 in the Yoga Sutras, postures should be steady and comfortable. Mr. Iyengar says, um, as asana is perfect firmness of body, steadiness of an intelligence and benevolence of spirit. <clears throat> so in 246, 246 two, sorry, 247, it's, Again, Mr. Iyengar's perfection in an asana is achieved when the effort to perform it becomes effortless and the infinite being within is reached. So in the interest of time, I will tell you that this effort to perform it means when you are no longer trembling, when everything is steady, even, you're balanced, the proper muscles are in use to help uh, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever muscle is working, there's an opposite muscle that's being stretched or opened. So this relaxation of effort is, uh, mm, it's a, a terribly practical piece of advice from um, these interpretations of the Yoga Sutras. So then, after we get all that, all right, now everybody's down in, uh, yeah, Mike, you can bend your knees and, <clears throat> yeah. Now lift, uh, when you come down, lift from the upper back to the lower back, upper back to lower back. <clears throat> so what we're trying, you know, what I think these, um, I spent uh, the better part of Saturday going over some of these um, interpretations, three different ones actually. And so after, if, if, uh, if the opposite of effort is relaxation, can you imagine, you know, if I'm telling you to relax now, you can go ahead and relax, Mike, lay down and just get comfortable in your Shavasana, have a head blanket like you need. But if I tell you that the opposite of effort is relaxation. Can you imagine, even in a pose like uh, Viparita Dandasana without the chair, you did it with the chair today, we're supposed to find a, a place where we're relaxed in that pose. And by absorption in the infinite, we come to this quiet place. So we do our best, our best that we can do personally, and that's different for everyone. Then we try to relax into the pose. And we learn the difference between doing the pose and being the pose. So right now, absorption into the infinite and that infinite is you. You're infinite. Relax and let go of any effort whatsoever. Feel as though there's a, a weight on your whole body and is, is bringing you more into the floor in quite a um, even manner. So much so, you feel heavy, you feel heavy, you feel heavy, and then all of a sudden, you feel light as a feather. All effort has ceased. No more analysis is necessary. Just be.
kept you long enough. Wiggle the fingers. Bring the hands in towards the abdomen or chest or somewhere in between. Wiggle the toes. Slowly bend the knees up one by one. Wait there, a couple breaths. And then slowly roll to your right side. A couple breaths there. And then use your left hand and your right hand. And slowly sit up straight, tall. Honor your practice with just a moment of quietude, centering yourself, finding that steadiness so that we can be as one, not separated, mind, body, soul, but as one. Bring your hands to your heart in gratitude for the practice of yoga, all the teachers who come before us in gratitude for the space and the community that we have through Austin Yoga Tree. Namaste.